Your third Greek word is isotherm, and that means keeping what the same the whole time? Yeah, keeping temperature the same the whole time. So let's look at this, um, I mean, let's, let's be serious about what we've got here. I've got a cylinder, and there it is, and there's no lid to it. Oh shoot, I don't mean to draw it like that. Let me draw it explicitly with no lid. All right, and then um, we're gonna have a piston. What was that piston, purple or something? I don't even know. Let's have this movable piston right here, and I'm saying that it has to always stay at the same temperature. That movable piston is right there, and here's my gas inside of here. Put some dots for you in there. And if it's going to stay at the same temperature, why, what I'd like it to do is I'd like it to do some work. So I'd like it to expand. And if it expands, chances are, well, let's get into the equation a little bit. We'll figure out what it does. I know that PV is NRT, or NKT if you're thinking physics. I definitely am thinking physics. So there we go, capital N, lowercase k, because Boltzmann's constant is pathetically small. And uh, the number of molecules is going to be probably pretty large also. So I'm going to say that this, if the temperature is the same and the amount of gas in there is the same, this is some constant. And, ooh, constant energy. Interesting. This might be the purest of the... Um, of the experiences. Well, is it constant? Well, oh, well, let's go into it. All right. What I'm saying then is if I'm trying to make a graph of pressure versus volume, which is what we've been doing every time, I'm going to say I'm starting at this state right here, which we'll call state A, and I might be going to this state right here, which is state B. And the way to do it is to keep this well, keep the pressure times volume product the same, and you know that res results in an inverse type graph, that it's going to be kind of like this as we're going from A to B. And the reason that we see that is if I'm looking for a function of pressure, it's going to be some constant, sorry, the, the dependence of pressure on volume is some constant over volume. So I have to uh, graph basically 1 over V, and I do it like that. Okay, and depending on the temperature, I might also have some... Let me, uh, let me do another one of these. It's kind of a characteristic isotherm looks like this. I might be like that, or I might be like that, or I might be like that. And we've spoken about which ones of those are highest temperature. Actually, why don't you go to your graphing calculator and say y equals 1 over x, and then that's y1 maybe, and maybe you call y2 um, 2 over x, and you just look at all these functions, and then maybe you make y3 3 over x. Those are different temperatures because the constant in the numerator here is the temperature, well, times n and k, but it's sort of the energy in the system, and then we're dividing it by our x variable, which is the volume. So here we have constant over volume, and these are called isotherms, meaning that they're the same temperature. All right, now, my plan is to figure out the work done while an isotherm is happening. While a gas is moving from this situation to an expansion, it's doing some work on its outside surroundings, and I want to know how much. So as it moves, we can say that work is the integral of pressure over volume, and I'm gonna be a little bit more careful here. I'm gonna say we're starting from initial volume and going to some final volume, and we can get ourselves this graph again. I'll just tear it out. This graph right here. <laughs> All right, so you've got that graph where we're saying that this is the final pressure and this is, oh my goodness, that's the initial pressure and this is the initial volume. And here we've got the final pressure and here we've got the final volume, all right? So I'm gonna take this and look at it in a little bit more detail. This, let's see, we have an equation for the pressure as a function of volume. We have to do substitution here because if I don't know that pressure is a function of volume, then I don't know what to do with it. But I know that pressure, let me actually get that, I'm gonna solve this equation for pressure. Pressure is N times K times T divided by volume. And I'll plug that sucker in right here. 
It's the integral of, um, well, it's the integral of, oh gosh, it's that NKT business right there, divided by volume over volume from V initial to V final. As I go from this volume to that volume, you know what we're doing here. We're finding the area underneath this curve. And so you're thinking Riemann sum, chunk it up and everything. I'm thinking let's just do ourselves some nice calculus. This N does not depend on the volume. This K, it's Boltzmann's constant. Of course it doesn't depend on volume. And temperature also does, doesn't depend on volume because it's an isotherm. The temperature is a constant only because we're working with an isotherm. So I'll put an equal sign right here and I'll pull those suckers out. N, K, T. Now I need the integral of one over V dV, which is the same as the integral of one over X dX. I can change these variables as much as I want. This integral turns out that it's just a natural log. Watch this. This is going to be, well, let's go down to this next line right here. There's a natural log here. And it's natural log of V, and we have to evaluate it between V naught and VF. So I'm going to say we've got N, K, T, mm, natural log natural log of V final minus N K T natural log of V initial. Dang. Can I clean that up a little bit? What if I have natural log of one thing minus the natural log of another thing? You know what that is. That's N K T times the natural log of the ratio of the two of them. So we're talking about natural logging the ratio of the two volumes, the initial volume and the final volume. That is the work that's done. This is the work that's done by the gas. And it's a positive number as long as the final volume is greater than the initial volume. But if I go from here to here, if I go from a big volume to a small volume, then the work that will be done will be negative. So. All of this is the same temperature, but if the gas is expanding, then we're doing positive work. And if it's not expanding, if it's contracting, then we're doing negative work. I want to say one more thing. In an isothermic situation, if the gas is expanding, it's going from one volume to another volume, you know if I go from this situation to Da, 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 this situation right here, if the gas is expanding, it will cool. But I'm not going to let it cool because it's isothermal. So an expanding gas that's not changing temperature must have heat added. And I'm not prepared yet to tell you how much heat we're adding, but we're going to get to that soon. We must be adding Q to system to maintain temperature. We can leave it at that.